Hi, thanks for watching BibleMountain.com. In this video, we're going to read from Exodus 27 and learn that our concept of worship is wrong. Many Christians think worship is having an emotional experience. If they sit in church and connect emotionally with the music or the sermon, they think that they have worshipped. Or if they're out in nature, reveling in the beauty of God's creation, they think they have worshipped. But this is wrong. Worship is not an emotional experience. Instead, worship is obedience and submission. Now, in order to understand the New Testament teachings and concept on worship, we need to understand the contrast with the Old Testament concept of worship. The Old Testament concept of worship was you had to go to a place to worship. But the New Testament concept of worship is that worship is done in spirit and in truth. So let's take a look at this in Exodus 27. The context of this is God has the Israelites at Mount Sinai. He is giving them the Mosaic Law. These verses are part of a section where God is telling them to build a tabernacle. So let's start reading at verse 1. And you shall make the altar of acacia wood, five cubits long and five cubits wide. The altar shall be square, and its height shall be three cubits. You shall make its horns on its four corners. Its horns shall be of one piece with it, and you shall overlay it with bronze. You shall make its pails for removing its ashes, and its shovels, and its basins, and its forks, and its firepans, you shall make all its utensils of bronze. You shall make for it a grating of network of bronze, and on the net you shall make four bronze rings at its four corners. You shall put it underneath, under the ledge of the altar, so that the net will reach halfway up the altar. So here the Israelites were told to make an altar. Now an altar was very common in their culture. If we go back to Genesis, Chapter 8, verse 20, Then Noah built an altar to Yahweh. Chapter 13, verse 18, Then Abram moved his tent and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and there he built an altar to Yahweh. Chapter 35, verse 1, Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and live there, and make an altar there to God. And then Exodus 17, verse 15, Moses built an altar and named it, Yahweh is my banner. And so we see the altars were very common. But notice the article before the word altar. In every instance, it's an indefinite article. Noah built an altar. Abram built an altar. Jacob built an altar. Moses built an altar. In other words, these were one of many altars. But notice the contrast in Exodus 27. God told them to make the altar. Part of the Mosaic law was that they were supposed to build this altar, and then that was the only altar that they were supposed to use. That's also in contrast to some of the other items they made in the, for the tabernacle. So if we go back to Exodus 25, they were supposed to make an ark. They were supposed to make a mercy seat. They were supposed to make a table. They were supposed to make a lampstand. But then in 27, when they're told about the altar, they're told to make the altar. Notice also the word ashes. This indicates the purpose of the altar. It was for burning their sacrifices. So obviously there would be ashes. There was provision for what to do with the ashes. They're also told to make fire pans, which they needed to make the sacrifices. And then notice the word grating. They had a grating on the bottom to allow the ashes to go through. Let's keep reading at verse 6. You shall make poles for the altar, poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with bronze. Its poles shall be inserted into the ring, so that the poles shall be on the two sides of the altar when it is carried. You shall make it hollow with planks, as it was shown to you in the mountain, so they shall make it. And then notice the word shown. Moses was not merely told to make this stuff. He was shown what it was supposed to look like. Now let's take a look at John 4 to start to see what the New Testament concept of worship is. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. The word woman refers to the Samaritan woman. The pronoun him refers to Jesus. So the Samaritan woman is talking to Jesus. And notice the pronoun this. That refers to Samaria. So the Samaritans believed that the one and only altar they were supposed to worship at was located in Samaria. Whereas the Jews believed that the altar was in Jerusalem, and the Samaritan woman made reference to that. So that was part of the conflict between the Samaritans and the Jews. They had a different opinion as to where the one and only altar was. 
but it also indicates to us that at that time their concept of worship was that you had to go to a place in order to worship. Now let's see what Jesus responded to that. John 4 verse 21. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So this is Jesus speaking. And notice the word neither. Jesus told her that from that time forward, worship would not be done at a place. It would not be in Samaria, nor would it be in Jerusalem. Rather, the true worshipers, and notice the word true, those who truly worship, were going to do it in spirit and in truth. So it would not be done at a place. Now let's look at the definition of worship. This is Matthew 2, verse 11. They fell to the ground and worshipped him. Matthew 26, 9, And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Acts 10, 25, When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet and worshipped him. 1 Corinthians 14, He will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. And then Revelation 4, 10, The 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever. So here's five examples of the word worship, but notice what comes before each of them. They fell to the ground. They took hold of his feet. They fell at his feet. Fall on his face. Fall down. Part of the concept of worship is falling down, falling down on your face. Now what are you communicating to someone when you go up to them and you fall down on your face at their feet? You are communicating obedience and submission. You are communicating that they are superior to you. And so this idea of worship includes the idea of obeying and submitting and acknowledging that God is greater than we are. So when we go back to John 4 verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The biblical definition of the word worship is this idea of going to God and communicating to him obedience and submission and the idea that he is greater than we are. And that is not done at a place. It is done in spirit. It is done when our heart and our mind truly obeys and submits to God. And furthermore, it's done in truth. This is not an emotional experience. This is based on truth. We have to understand the truth about God. We have to understand the truth about us in order to truly worship God, in order to truly communicate to God our obedience and our submission to Him. So again, many Christians think worship is having an emotional experience. They might sit in church and connect emotionally with the music or the sermon and think that they have worshipped, or they might be out in nature reveling in the beauty of God's creation and think that they have worshipped, but that is not correct. Worship is not an emotional experience. Worship is obedience and submission. In order to understand the New Testament concept of worship, we have to understand the contrast with the Old Testament concept of worship the Old Testament concept of worship was you had to go to a place, whereas the New Testament concept of worship is that it is done in spirit and in truth. And worship means to obey and submit to God. If you haven't joined my email list, please do so. First of all, it is free. By signing up, you get immediate access to all my free content. It will be delivered right to your email inbox. This is the best way to make sure you don't miss out on any of my free content. In order to sign up, go to BibleMountain.com, click on follow, there will be a place there to enter your email address. Once again, thank you for watching BibleMountain.com.